um, I'd like to invite the next speaker. It's uh, Professor Dr. Ishtiak Rizvi, who is a consultant accident emergency department in the NHS. And uh, his talk is going to be on acute care considerations in training of junior doctors, accident emergency doctors. Um, and just to keep things tight, can I just remind people, speakers, the audience, just to time keep, and just to focus on questions as opposed to comments, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Suhail Chuktai, especially for uh, organizing this. And uh, it's an honor for me uh, to be part of uh, uh, this conference today. Uh, I'm very conscious of the fact that the time constraints are there, so I'll stick to my you, 10 minutes, and I'll be very brief and to the point. So regarding the eligibility of, uh, for the training, there are minimum uh, standards uh, which are laid down. Now, previously, what used to happen was that uh, an FY1 would form part of uh, their experience in training going through the emergency medicine. Sorry, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. We would only take uh, uh, trainees who have at least completed uh, a year of their foundation year, having rotated through different specialties, mainly uh, surgery and one post in uh, medicine, and they would then be accepted as part of uh, their training into emergency medicine. The training uh, would then uh, be allowed to uh, start or complete as part of uh, their further training in the emergency medicine. What training programs are on offer as far as uh, the training within the emergency department is concerned? One is the ACCS, which is the Acute uh, Care Common STEM uh, Pathway. Uh, this would uh, involve them rotating through emergency medicine, uh, where, they're, where they're, they'll be spending part of their uh, uh, placement. It would be in the intensive care unit, uh, in the anesthesia department, and in acute medicine. So usually is over two years uh, duration, but it gives a fairly broad base uh, uh, for them to get the knowledge necessary. Then there is core training, as we call the CT uh, training, and that is in uh, medicine and surgery. And this used to be at the senior house officer level, which is the foundation uh, year two uh, from now onwards. There is specialty training, and this is for uh, uh, preparing them and going through the general practice through the PEDS, uh, OBS and gynae, and uh, uh, it should be at a senior level, which is at uh, a registrar, uh, either in a medical or a surgical specialty. It could also include uh, cardiology, a cardiothoracic, or in orthopedics. Then there is a specialty uh, doctor itself. Uh, formerly, uh, they were called the staff grades and they are the ones who are the backbone as far as the delivery, the service delivery element within the NHS is uh, concerned, and they really do an invaluable job in providing that service within the uh, trusts. Then we lead on to what is uh, the consultant, and I'll expand a little bit on the, that. That in emergency medicine, as far as uh, prior to an appointment as an emergency medicine consultant is concerned, they must have passed all parts of their uh, FR Chem exam, which is the fellowship of the Royal College of uh, Emergency Medicine. And they must have a minimum of in-date courses, such as the advanced trauma life support course, advanced life support course, advanced cardiac life support course, uh, or one of the pediatric uh, life support courses as either the advanced pediatric or pediatric advanced life support courses. So this is a kind of a standard which is expected whenever the appointment for a consultant post is happening for the junior doctors. Now out goes and gone are the days of uh, cramming and some of uh, uh, my fellow senior colleagues as we used to call the cramming or the rutta of uh, uh, a cover to cover of a Gray's anatomy or a Ganong physiology 
unfortunately, is out of date nowadays. In comes learning tools which have replaced, and these are in online tools. The World Wide Web has opened up a completely new world, and it isn't that long that this was introduced, but it, the uptake is absolutely phenomenal as far as the growth is concerned. And everyone, no matter whether they are in UK, US, Pakistan, or any other part of the world, access is open to them as far as learning goes. CDs, even now the bigger reference books are available in that format. And uh, some of the textbooks now, in fact, when they are being sold, CD forms part of it, and it is at the back cover of those. Planet of the Apps, it's nothing to do with the conference, which has the same uh, APPS uh, thing. All the apps are now available on the Android phones, and most people have the iPhones, and you have access to all sorts of things including within the UK, for example, the British National Formulary, the BNF is available on the app, so you are on the go and you have access. In fact, they have recently now opened that up to worldwide, so anybody with a phone anywhere in the world can have access to the British National Formulary and update their knowledge and prescribe the medica medications with safety. From students to medics, Gone are the days of the long essays whereby you had to write uh, pages and pages of those and the answers uh, were weighed and the marks were given accordingly. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. The assessment tools which are in vogue and in use now are the multiple choice uh, questions and it gives that uh, degree of uh, objectivity. There are multiple selection questions and there are short answers. Uh, there is problem-based learning available uh, to the students at university and medical college level. And there are tick box exercises whereby it's a computer which picks up what the correct answers are and it gives you that uh, degree of uh, confidence. Training these days is guideline and protocol driven. So for everything there is a, uh, a guideline or a protocol that is available. And we are creating a generation of uh, newly uh, experienced doctors who are very much uh, uh, attuned to and tend to follow what is available as a protocol. So for everything they ask for a protocol. National Institute of uh, uh, Health and Clinical Excellence provides these uh, guidelines, whether these are prescribing of drugs, whether these are investigations that are required, whether it is a chemotherapy that needs to be given, all the guidelines are there for us and for the newly qualified doctors to take. The Royal College of Emergency Medicine has uh, guidelines in place for the management of uh, the most uh, of the common conditions that present to the emergency department. Uh, so if you need a CT scan, then all you need to do is complete uh, tick boxes. If the patient ticks any of those boxes, you go straight ahead for a CT scan and no questions asked, no arguments with the consultant radiologist to convince them whether a CT is required or not. You just get on with it. There's a consultant sign off whereby the trainees are provided with all the support and all the uh, help they need in uh, getting that confidence building as far as treating of the diseases are concerned. So they see the patient, they clock the patient, and then they come to, to the consultant for getting a final sign off. Knowledge, skill set, experience, gives rise to arousal and helps to improve the performance. Thanks for listening Thank and any so questions. Much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ishtag. I think we have
Uh, time for a couple of questions. Anyone? We've got someone in the front row here. Yes. Any uh, changes in the future of junior doctor training in the emergency department, future directions? Yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, what I see as the future of uh, training, it would be from a different angle from what my or my previous generation is used to. It would not be classroom based. It would be more either a virtual or it will be on mannequins and it would be whereby before what I call that the doctors that let, let loose on their patients, they would have gained plenty of experience in other uh, uh, modes of practicing safely before they are actually uh, allowed to deal with the patients. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank, thank you very much, much. Thank you very much. Professor Ishtayak. Thank you for giving us an update.